Okay, in this video, we're going to solve a math problem that, given a circle of radius r that is overlain with an evenly spaced lattice of spacing s, compute exactly how many points, in other words, that's intersections of that grid, the lattice, that lie within and on the circle. So we're going to look at a circle this way. Several ways you could solve this problem, but not very many of them will get an exact number of points. You can look at a circle of radius r, and you can compute area equals pi r squared. Um, but, and then uh, you can also just count numbers of points. And the number of points that we would be interested in this case are all on the grid intersections. And they look like this. And counting is great um, when the circle is small. Um, I had a particular problem where I wanted a circle of radius 100 meters with a lattice grid spacing of <clears throat> 5 centimeters, and that's too much work. I'm never going to be able to count that many points, so I needed a way to compute it. That's what this is for. Now we are going to assume, for the, problem, for the purposes of this problem, that the lattice is centered. And um, centered on the circle. You, I think you could solve this problem without that, but it's just a complication that I don't want to mess with. Uh, it's going to be pretty close. If and so one of the things you can do, I'm going to define a spacing s here and a spacing s here. One of the things you can do is you can compute the area, then you can compute the area of one of these little grids. And you can divide that area into this area, and you'll come up with a number. And it's probably pretty darn close. Um, I don't know if it's exact yet, but um, uh, that is probably close. But I want to know exactly uh, how many points are inside the circle or on the circle. Sometimes, for big enough circles, there will be grid points that fall directly on the, on the, the circle diameter. Okay, so um, so uh, the solution is going to go this way. We are going to uh, mechanize a scheme to count the number of points along each chord of one quadrant, and then we're going to multiply the answer by 4 to calculate the total number of points. So roughly that's what we're going to do. I uh, did some research on the internet and I just looked around and there wasn't one that solved the problem that I wanted. So that's why we're doing this video. So for part A, um, we're going to determine the length of each chord. And a chord is usually a line that goes along a circle uh, parallel to one of the major diameters. Um, so if we take our circle and, uh, and we compute We lay our grid out for one of the quadrants. Um, so what we have is, and these are, this is one of the chords. I'm just going to do a general one here. Um, what we have is, uh, there's a point right here on the circle, and we can draw a line from there, and we know that this distance is R. 
And then we know that these little spacings are S. And, um, and this is a chord that we're interested in. And um, so one of the things is we'll notice that right at this point, we're going to compute a chord length of zero. And over at this point, we're going to compute a chord length of R. So um, that's something to keep in mind. We're going to call this length of the chord is equal to the square root of R squared minus I, and I'll explain what that is in a second, S squared. And um, this is where I is the chord number. And S equals lattice spacing. Now, why did I do that? And the reason for this is I'm just using Pythagorean's theorem. I know that the chord number for this one is 2, 1, 2. And then we know this is R. So we know that summing um, 2 times S plus this length squared, 2 times S squared plus this length squared is equal to R squared. You, you solve that and you get R squared minus the chord number. So in other words, how many chords over are we? Times S squared. And the square root of that is the, the chord length. Now that will accurately compute the chord length from here to here. So we'll know exactly how long that line is. Okay, part B. Determine how many points are on each chord. All right, so the number of points on a chord is going to be the length of the chord divided by what? S. If we look here, you can see that we've got the length of the chord divided by this distance, which is S. Uh, you're going to get a number. And uh, what you're going to notice is that the answer will usually give you um, a whole number with a remainder. But the integer value of that, the integer value of this division of how many times S will go into the length of the chord, that will compute the number of spaces between the points, um, which is equivalent to the number of points on the chord less one. So in other words, in this particular case, we've got one, two, three points on the on the chord, so we're going to get um, R divided by three, but it's only computing the spaces, so you're going to wind up in this case with a two. It's counting here and here, so you're going to get two point something. If you drop the remainder, um, you're going to get two, but there's actually three because there's one here. So once you know the number of points on the chord, um, well, there's another thing we have to do. We have to um, we have to drop this remainder. So the way we're going to handle that is there is a number of points equals um, we're going to use a notation that dem that is called the floor. Uh, and it looks like this. Oops. Looks like this. Length of the chord over S. And it only has brackets on the bottom. And uh, it's also equivalent to the integer. There's, you know, if you're used to using things like Excel programs or spreadsheets or code, there's usually a function called INT. 
and you would do that. I think the math representation you would use is the floor of LC over S. What that does is it rounds down to the nearest integer, and that's what we want for number of points. All right, part C. Um, we're going to compute the summation of all the points on all the chords in the quadrant. Compute the sum. All points on all chords uh, in the quadrant. Let's go ahead and add that. All right, so first um, we need to know the number of chords in the quadrant. And, um, and we need that so, because we need to know the sum of all the points on all the chords. The number of chords is equal to R, um, the radius, divided by S. It's pretty straightforward. Looking back at uh, the number of chords along this way, you're going to get one, two, three in this case. So R divided by three, uh, which is S, is going to give you the number of chords. Pretty straightforward. Um, now note, if um, R is not evenly divisible by S, there will be a remainder which could cause issues in the upcoming, uh, sorry, in the upcoming summation. And I'm just going to use the summation symbol here. So this is important to remember um, in this circle, if uh, the lattice spacing doesn't land directly on the diameter, there's going to be a remainder. If you don't account for that remainder when you do your summation, um, you could have a fractional portion left over, and it might or might not work. And you're gonna have to pay attention to that when you do the sum. So, um, next, now, now we need to sum up um, all the points on all the chords. So we're gonna write a sum from i equals one to number of chords. So we're gonna sum from here to here. We're gonna count one, two, three. We're gonna, and we're gonna put the com computation in there. And um, i is just gonna be our counter for the chords. And we're going to sum up the number of points. So now I'm gonna, so we can see what's going on. I'm gonna expand this back out. So I'm gonna call this uh, quadrant number of points. And that is going to be the summation from I equals zero to I equals R over S of the integer. Well, we're going to use the floor function, so let's use that. The floor of the square root of R squared minus I S quantity squared. And then that's divided by S. So number of points here is given by um, R squared. It's R over S. 
and and then um, number of points is given by LC over S or floor of LC over S. Now again, down here, I equals incremental chord number R is radius and S is lattice space. Okay, so here's an interesting thing. Um, when we're starting with I equals zero, we're going to start with I equals zero. Um, that's what I wrote in the summation. Um, we are including the first vertical chord above the circle center. However, we are excluding the points on the horizontal um, row along the base of the quadrant. And that is because we're computing with that, with our number of points, we're computing spaces, we're computing this space, this space, this space. So these, this one's going to come up with two, this one's going to come up with two, and this one's going to come up with three. So if you have two here, you really want three chords. Uh, so we're excluding, I'm going to assume we're excluding this bottom row. And that would include this point out here. Um, but uh, the, the one thing it's important to remember is the center of the circle is never going to be counted by this method. And this is due to the fact that dividing R by S is less than, is, is one less than the total number of points on the central chord. All right, we're going to keep going here. Um, now that we know how many points are in one quadrant, we're going to need to multiply by four uh, to calculate all of the points in the circle except for the center point which has not been counted yet, so we're going to add one to include that. So, number of points in or on the circle is equal to four times the quantity QNP, which I showed you before, plus one. So therefore, a final representation for the total number of points on and within a circle of arbitrary radius r is given by the following. Expand it all the way back out. Um, number of points equals the number four times big bracket summation from I equals zero to I equals R S R divided by S floor of square root R squared minus I times S 
squared over S. And again, that's the floor. Big bracket. And then what's the last thing? Add one for that central point in the circle that just never got counted. Where R equals the radius of circle. I is again chord number. Looks like I'm off the page. Chord number and S is uh, square lattice distance. Okay, so now we'd like to go back and check our simple example here, uh, radius of three with a space of one. So let's do that. And let's use this summation. So what we're gonna get, number of points equals, oops, four, times from i equals zero to i equals r over s. r is three, this is one, so sum from i equals zero to three. Of the floor of square root of three squared minus what's it's minus um, I times S, which is one squared over one. Big bracket plus one, because we want to get that center point. Okay, so we are going to use i equals zero first time through. We're gonna get three minus zero, three squared minus zero over one. So the square root of nine over one, which is three. So we'll get three. We have to do i is one, and we get nine minus one. So that's square root of eight And then we need to take the floor of that, the floor of square root of eight. And then let's do this. Plus the floor square root of eight. And then for I is two, we have um, the floor of nine minus four, so that's going to be square root of five. And then for i equals three, we are going to get zero. So you're gonna get a zero for that third one. And that's a reminder that you, you don't wind up with a chord length there. So you've got to deal with that in your solution. And then we're gonna multiply this by four and add one. So we're going to get four times three plus, <clears throat> you're gonna get, our square root of eight is about 2.82. So you're gonna get two. Square root of five um, is about 2.23 and the floor of that is two 
plus zero plus one. So that's seven in the middle times four is 28 plus one is 29 points in our simple circle. Let's check that and make sure that's right. Um, we had a three radius three chord. So let's just do that. We're going to do it right here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Here's the circle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. We got all of them. So we got it right. Now, um, that seems like kind of a difficult calculation just to count 29 points. It's kind of a pain, but it's not too bad. And the nice thing is that you can program this into your um, graphing calculator and um, you can solve a really big problem. Going back to my original problem, I had a circle of 100 meters, 100 meters, and a grid size of 0.05 meters. In other words, that's five centimeters. So how many points are in that huge circle when I have a five centimeter grid laid on there? That's what I needed to solve. So uh, I've programmed this in to our TI-84 and I'm not gonna make you suffer along with me entering everything in there. So it's one plus four times the summation from X equals zero to 1000 because um, a 100 meter circle divided by uh, 0.05 is a thousand. And, uh, and then we're gonna get uh, the integer of square root of 50 squared, which is R, 50 meters squared, minus um, the five centimeters times I squared, and we're gonna divide that by S, the distance S, and let's push enter, and you can see that it's thinking, and it's going to come back with after a minute, it's kind of a lot of points to crunch. So the little calculator is doing all the work. Look at that. 3,141,549 points. So that's a lot of points to count. I would never want to do that on my own. Um, and the calculator made it easy, and my calculation uh, went pretty quickly in the calculator. So I hope you find that useful. Um, I found it kind of interesting that the numbers I picked, 100 meters and 5 centimeters, came up with a number that is almost 1 million times pi. But what is pi? 3.14159. Two eight or something is that right? Um, pi three point one four. Here it is three point one four one five nine two six five three point one four one five nine two six. And we see that this is a million times that one four one five nine two is what pi is, and 4.9 is how many points? Now, what is the deal with that? It has to do with the fact that, um, well, the 100 and the 5 centimeter, uh, sort of, it just so happened that it came out that way, but these this grid line is kind of chunky, and so uh, it's uh, discretized, and so you're always going to have um, 
less. This is 159, this is 1549. And so there's a few points less than this factor of pi. Um, it's always going to be less, and it's going to be kind of chunky as S changes. Uh, but you can go through and calculate all those all those different chances if you like. But anyways, um, interesting result. Useful calculation. Again, there it is. The number of points is four times all of that. Uh, thanks for listening. I hope you find this useful. Okay, a little bit of a postscript for you here. I went back and viewed the video. I realized I had made a made a mistake. Um, I had given you the right increment on the number of points in the quadrant, but when I had computed it here, I wrote it incorrectly. I wrote from i equals one um, to the number of chords, computes the number of points. That's really supposed to be zero. And I had done it correctly here. I put a zero, which is what it should be. And what I want to show you now is how that affects chord counting. And um, something I didn't explain earlier is that, uh, how, do, how do I know that multiplying by four gets everything? And the way we know that is, we do this calculation the way I've been explaining. Um, when we do the calculations, you know, here you're gonna get a two. So that, we're assuming that doesn't count this row. You don't get anything out here. So uh, what you're really getting uh, with the ca with the quadrant calculation is going to be in this box, and um, and so we're getting all of these points in the first quadrant. If you think about just rotating that over, the one thing this does is it, it counts this column, but it doesn't count this row. But we're multiplying by four, so we're going to get all four of these major uh, chords in here. And um, so if you just kind of think about rotating it over, what you get over here is you get this point and you get all these points and then if you rotate it over here you get all of these points and then if you rotate it one more time you get all of these points but look who never got counted it was that center point so it's the center point and it always you know we add one to get that center point back in and uh, that's how we get the full calculation of the circle. I hope you find that useful. If you find any other errors in the video, uh, please put it in the comments. Thanks.